Hi, and welcome to uh, Mrs. V Masterclass Series. Uh, this this uh, a whole lot of webinars talking about everything health and well-being and what I love to talk about. So welcome, and I'm so excited tonight because we've actually got a guest on which I have personally experienced his uh, hypnotherapy and NLP, uh, Paul El Elicio. Welcome. How you doing? Nice to be here. Yeah, so excited because I've been, um, you know, just dying to share the experience that I had, which was amazing and just because I'm always a bit nervous about hypnotherapy because I, I feel like it drags on, but it was so awesome and so jam-packed and you are very skilled. So thank you for coming on the webinar. Thank you for having me and I'm super excited to share with everyone and give as much information as I can. Awesome. So first, if you could just tell everyone who is listening and watching a little bit about yourself. Cool. So um, I've been in the health and wellness industry for over a decade now. First started off as a PT. Um, there's a little bit of a backstory to all that, but basically got into the PT world and started working with people at a physical level and then started to realize I had to learn nutrition, had to learn corrective exercise, had to learn more about hormones and balancing like, all the stresses in the body. And then I learned more and more and more and heaps of really cool ways to work with people, but realized a lot of people got stuck. So then I started to realize it was all their mental, emotional beliefs and blocks that were keeping people from actually doing the things they knew they needed to do. So I... Because I had per personally had a huge mental, emotional sort of thing happen to me early in, in my life and broke through that stuff. So I went and learned how to work with people that way, uh, started applying those skills. And now I pretty much predominantly work at that level with people, but I still integrate everything that I've learned. So I mostly work with NLP hypnosis and other mind-body methods and help people clear emotional blocks, um, trauma, any beliefs they've got. And then help to tie in all the stuff I've learned about managing the body and, and to get optimal performance. So then you can actually go out and achieve your dreams because the more you've energy you free up, whether it's mental, emotional, whether it's actually creating physical energy or, you know, some of the other levels that can help you to move forward. So that's what I, how I kind of work with people. It's awesome. Well, I'll just give you a little snapshot because when I had a session, I had three big break breakthroughs, which was a lot, but it was a two hour session and work very quickly. But what I loved is you just didn't let me let my mind get in the way. Like I just couldn't think, it was so fast. And one of my main ones was that I'd realized that I'd been actually, the way I connected with my husband was through anger because of my dad's stuff. So the breakthrough I had was suddenly, oh my God, I don't have to connect, uh, connect through that way. And there's now an empty space of going, what do I create? It's such an amazing, and I've done a lot of work on myself, so I was pretty blown away by um, that change. And it happened exactly where you take people through that, those beliefs or the experiences or something that happens that you don't even realise, because I know that everything's a reflection, but I didn't, I'd miss that. It's amazing how you just, all the work that I did, you know. It's cool, because one of the big things I'm like, talk to all my clients and students about is life is reflecting you. So you know, we run into these conflicts, we run into these same, same patterns, different people, same problems, different situations. And like, why has this always happened to me? And the common factor is it's you, right? So there's some reason why unconsciously you attract those situations or you're putting out that, that kind of vibe to bring that person in to act that kind of way. Cause they're not always like that, but why they're like that to you. So a lot of times it's our past experiences and we're holding onto that in our physical body, our unconscious mind, energetically, depending on which way you want to understand it. And so we see the world through that filter. So we have to create it. So one of the best things that we kind of did was freed up that energy. So now you've got more space in your mind and your nervous system to now have new experiences and you're not creating that sort of external reality anymore. And now, you, now you're learning new behaviors. You can now have new choices. So that's one of the awesome things. Like you've freed up all that sort of emotional stuff from the past. Now you've got so much more ability to create new things in that situation. And that's what happened, just so you know who's watching, is that I had, a lot, my dad was ang angry. So I kind of, the only person I'd ever be angry with all my partners. <laughs> They'd be angry, what are you doing? And, you know, and I think that was exactly what I kept relating, but I never said it, it was funny. Yeah. So, fantastic, um, love, let's just get going on what we're, what do you want to talk about tonight, which is about stress. Yeah, so. And yeah, go for yeah, it. So stress is huge. And like, we experienced a bit of the mental, emotional stress in, in the session, like, you know, having that pattern repeat over and over again, that's a lot of background noise. And when, when you free up that kind of thing, it just creates that extra bandwidth for you to have focus on your goals and do things different versus you know, run those old programs. So, you know, you can free the stress. And a lot of our stress these days is the mental, emotional kind of stress. 
and it's based on how we perceive the world outside us because a lot of how it used to happen was more the body stress and you know the environment because that's how we evolved right it was there was always threats but now our threats are more perceived threats like we think we're going to get in trouble for doing something at work or you know, we're worried about what our partner thinks or we're worried about what other people think. Um, we're you know, stressing about the food we eat. And it's not even the food we eat, it's the way we think about it that's causing the stress on the body. Then obviously you've got the food you eat, which can cause stress or it can build your body up. So there's heaps of things that I want to share with you guys and like, we'll, we'll go wherever you think it's the yeah, best. Great. It all adds up. And any, any area you can actually get the, the energy building in your body versus taking away is going to give you more resources because the more energy you have, the more changeability you have. So energy equals changeability. And if you've got you know, energy stuck in the past and past experiences, you keep creating them, that, that's robbing you from energy from now to put into your future. I explain it, it's like a bank account. You know, if you've got your, all your energy invested in past trauma, past experiences, you've got no energy to spend now and invest in your future. So whether we talk about body, mind, and a bit of both, I'm happy to sort of go wherever it goes. Yeah, look, I, I love him. Mean, my intention is always that everyone takes away something that they can put to practice after this session or during. I know you're going to do a little process with us, which will be awesome. Um, so, yeah, anything, any tips or ways people can manage stress would be yeah. fantastic. Cool. So let's start off with one of my favorite ones to do with clients and based on perception, like most of our stress comes from how we see the world and, and how we're thinking about it. It's not really what's happening out there. So one of my favorite techniques and I'll get anyone that's listening, write it down. Obviously we're not going to have enough time to do that. We're going to do a couple of other things tonight, but I'll get you to take notes and do this for homework for me. It's called the worry time technique. And you know, 99% of the people out there are going to be worried and stressed about things in their life. So what I tell my clients to do is to actually use that to help you instead of getting your way. Cause when you, when you get nervous, anxious, worried, it actually shuts down your nervous system and it stops you from being resourceful and being creative. And to be creative, you have to be relaxed and centered, which we're going to do a meditation technique kind of for later. But the best way to do it is to empty your head. So step one of the worry time technique, normally set a timer, give yourself five minutes, give yourself a couple minutes, and press go and just empty your head. So step one, write down everything that you're worried about. There's no too small, there's no too big. Just completely empty for the set amount of time. If it's five minutes, do that. Think on paper, right? So once you've run out of time or you run out of paper. I've <laughs> been <laughs> running out of paper. Yeah. So completely empty your head and that's going to basically close all the tabs and put all the stuff that's in your head on paper, which then frees up your mind to now think a bit clearer, right? So step two then, is still focused on the, the problem. We're gonna to flip to solutions in a minute, but then you wanna go through and look at all the things you've written down and work out what is the worst thing that can happen for each one. Now, this step is really great because what it does sometimes, it makes you look at the stuff and go, well, the worst that can happen is not that bad. Like, why am I even stressing about that? Or it can make you go, hey, hold on a second. That's actually quite, could be quite a big catastrophe if I don't sort that out. I'm gonna focus on that. So it kind of filters out what is worth worrying about and what's not. So the first two steps, again, are just going to be focused on the problem. But now we're going to do what most people don't do. Because a lot of people think about the problem. They think about what could go wrong and all that kind of stuff. They don't actually get to the solution. So now the next couple of steps are all solution focused. So now you want to take each one of those and you want to ask yourself, what can I do to prevent that from happening? So that's going to give you action steps. So you can just start doing those and you can prevent those things from happening. And then the next question is that, what do I do if it does happen? So it gives you your like backup plan in case those things do go wrong. Right. You don't have to worry about it. So if you do the things you need to do, the problems aren't going to happen. And if they do happen, you've already got ways to deal with them. So then you can just empty your head and not have to stress about those things and uh, free up your mind to now focus on other things that you really want to spend your time and energy on. So that's one that a lot of my clients get for homework and it just, you know, if you need to do it daily, do it daily. If you've got a new task or new thing coming up with work, do that as well. I like to do this when I've got a lot on and I've got a couple of big workshops happening and I kind of just empty my head and come up with all the solutions and ways to prevent problems from happening before they even happen. But it's, a, it's a, one of those techniques that is super easy and super quick, but you're going to get a lot of quick wins for straight away. Can I ask you something with that? Because already when you said that, I got stressed at the thought. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. everything down. So is there something, because I actually, have, I know a lot of friends and colleagues 
who can't even get to that stage of going, cool. it's too painful to put it out into paper. Yes. Is there any process that can help that at all? Cool. So it's really, really uh, interesting when people, how people perceive their problems. And we'll talk about how the in, internal world actually reflects on the external world. But what's probably happening for a lot of people that are like that, they're actually making their problems in their head really big. So I've got a huge problem that I can't see past is the language that they'll probably use. So in their mind, there's actually a picture of the problem right in front of them, really big, and they can't see past it. So anyone that's doing this, and I'd love you to do this as well, yeah. let's pick like a medium level kind of frustration at the moment, okay? So yeah. I want you just to filter through your head. Anyone that's listening, go through this process as well, and just pick like a medium level frustration. And when you think of that, you have a picture in your mind appear of some sort that'll just, when you think of that problem, it'll be pictured, yep. Yeah. And you'll have a certain size, a certain color, and a certain location in your mind. Yeah. Now, what I want you to do is slowly make it move away from you. And as you move it away, take all the color out of it and make it go smaller and darker away from you and give yourself room to think and feel different. Oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> that already felt great. <laughs> so this, is, this is one of the things I teach. And we run our mind through pictures, sounds. And you know the way we do this, and, and obviously the feelings in our body, the way you have the pictures in your mind affects how you feel about them. Mm. If you've got a picture of something you really want to do right in front of you, it's going to make you really feel the energy of it. But if it's really bad, it's going to intensify the energy. So moving the pictures smaller and darker away from you takes away the energy. So smaller, darker, further away really helps. And if you've got something you want to be motivated for, let's just try this one. So if there's something that you, you know you, you, you want to do, but you're not really doing, you want to be a little bit more motivated for, it could be anything. It could be a gym. It could be a cleaning. It could be anything. You've got something? I've got something, yeah. Oh, so in your mind, it will have a certain size, certain picture, location, etc. Move that a little bit closer to you in your mind. So bring it closer to your body. And as you do that, you'll probably feel the, the motivation increase. Make it a bit more colourful and increase the size of it. And as you do that, notice how much more in your mind that... Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can always just go inside and adjust the pictures in your mind. And that's going to change instantly how you feel about it. Because a lot of people, they've got their heads so full of all these internal pictures and obviously sounds as well. And you can do the same thing with sounds. But sometimes you've got to create enough space in your head, like close the tabs basically, so that then you've got enough room to kind of focus on what's in front of you. So. Oh, that's great. Because I, I mean, part of sometimes I have with clients is I give them homework to do and it's just too much, like even to make that step so i love that advice to actually see what's the priority first yeah and then how to see because they just see it so big and it gets overwhelming and i think even the writing down is sometimes the fear of looking at it you know yeah cool, oh, cool. i love that anyone <laughs> yeah, well there's tons of things you can do one thing you talked about is overwhelm yeah now, overwhelm that happens sometimes because your head is too full and i know that you said people might be afraid of writing down, but actually writing down is going to free them because what they've done in their head, they've made, made it a too big a thing. But yep. What generally happens in your mind, you've got a certain capacity for a amount of things you can think about before it goes, Hey, there's too much going on. There's too much chaos in the nervous system. I don't know what to focus on. It's too hard. So the best thing to do is to think on paper and use the paper as the thing that holds everything together. And then you can go through and then prioritize. So once we get any more than sort of, for some people, it's five. Some people, it's seven. Some people, it's up to 12. Any more than those numbers, our brain's like, well, there's too much going on. I'm checking out kind of thing. Yeah. So if you empty everything that you're thinking about, not even worry, just like what's in your head on paper, you get a good list. Then you can go through and prioritize. So I'm a big believer in the 80-20. So what are the 80% of these, or 20% of these tasks that are going to be 80% of the results? Right. And focus on them. Or what are the 20% of tasks that cause me 80% of my stress? If I sort those out, that's going to help me free up a lot. And also for clients, what are the 20% of things that I could do that would give me 80% of my happiness, 80% of the um, joy in my life? And so you don't have to do a lot. You just do one or two things that are actually going to be big wins. So like for me, it's always gone for a walk with my beautiful girlfriend and my dog or going down the beach. If I do those, they're going to give me 80% of what makes me happy. If I do that once a day, I've won the day. So that's yeah. some things you can do. Working out what's the big bang things always always really helps because that's the thing is is we're talking about tonight is when you're stuck and breaking that negative cycle what's something that just can some techniques to snap you out of that as well Sweet. so 
some of the mind stuff we just did is great, but also sometimes when you're stuck in your mind, it's yeah. hard, hard to outthink yourself. So what's great about this, we've got two doors we can really go through, the mind door or the body door. Now, you can shift your body. So your physiology is reflected in psychology and your psychology is reflected in your physiology. So if you're really stuck, move your body, it'll move your mind, okay? So some really cool tips are to just get up. If you're stuck in a rut, sometimes what I call, am I allowed to swear on this show? <laughs> yeah, of course. You can so I call it sitting in your own shit, basically, yeah. right? And if you're stuck in that and you sit in it longer, it just, it just gets worse and worse and harder to get out. So sometimes just getting up and moving, it's going to, changing your posture, even just sitting up in your chair and, and stretching out and looking at the roof. This is a really great one. I know that 99% of the people on here are probably watching this on a phone, laptop, whatever. And after a while, your body is going to naturally hunch over. And that posture is linked to a, like, if you think about someone that has depression, they're like this, they're like this, they're folded over, they're more in a fetal position. Your body in that position thinks that your mind should feel the same. It matches it up. So you're going to start to think thoughts that are in alignment with that posture. So even just opening a posture, stretching your arms out and looking at the roof and smiling, just do that. Just do, just stay there. Everyone that's what don't watch me, watch the roof, smile, do this for five seconds, keep smiling. And while you're there, you're not allowed to move you, anything in your body. Keep smiling. Try to feel sad or depressed while you're still smiling and looking at the roof. No, I want to laugh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because that posture is linked in your nervous system to feeling open, good, etc. And there's so many studies that they're doing with this. Just getting people to smile for you know 30 minutes a day can reverse like chronic diagnosed severe depression just by changing because when you're smiling you have to fire off all the neurochemistry and all those things that create this the feeling in your body because your your body's doing it. it's like well your body's doing it. you have to feel this so there's some real easy things super big fan of some breathing techniques changing your breathing pumping your body with that is awesome i really like cold water as well so if you're struggling um either jumping in the ocean jumping in a cold shower and just snapping your body instantly with that stimulus it's fantastic cold water therapy like just jumping in a cold shower can actually reset your nervous system it actually starts to reset your hormones it actually will start to pump blood into your internal organs uh, because your body thinks it's obviously going to freeze so it pumps it in but then once you've done that for a couple of minutes it'll actually pump it back out again and actually reset a lot of the systems in your body so you actually get a real burst of energy and it's you know fantastic if you're feeling flat especially on a hot day you've been working go home have a quick cold shower you actually get a lot of energy for the rest of the night you don't have to sit there all tired eating junk food you know and not really getting the most out of your life and you know the funny thing is that i know for me that sometimes if you work around a lot of people and you pick up other people's energy and you don't even know that you've got it so that's why some of the time i have a shower because yeah. it's just like I've got to just wash all this energy off because you go, is it, is, is, am I depressed or is it someone else's something that I've picked up? So I love the water thing, yeah. Yeah, and one cool thing, if you, if you don't want to do cold, you can do contrast, hot, cold, hot, cold. That works really nice too. So go hot, nice, turn on the cold for a little bit, back and forth, and that will pump blood. Hot will get the blood flowing, cold will constrict, and that is like a pumping effect. Anything that pumps your body is fantastic. So because uh, we're so stuck and stagnant. If you think your body is mostly water, the number can go anywhere from like 70 to 90%, depending on who you ask. If we're seated still, the water is not moving. So we want to like get our body active, but even just using the cold water to change the pressure on our skin, change the, the, the temperature in our body will change the pump. So uh, that's not get everything moving yet. Super easy. And these, these like really quick hacks that you don't have to think about, you just have to bang, do, and you're going to feel different. Divine, divine love. Um, so here the arm is, does your body and mind not, co uh, does it not co cooperate when you need it to? How do you, why are you losing the battle to stress? So yeah, so when there's a body-mind disconnect, um, so cool. perhaps, yeah, it's getting someone so motivated. This can happen in lots of different ways. A lot of it, you know, there's something that happens in life, early in life, whenever, where you have a lot of something happen. And then what tends to happen, when we feel unsafe, we, we try to escape into our mind to outthink the situation because we need to like, work out what to do to survive. But sometimes what happens with people, they never learn to feel safe back in their body. They get stuck in their head and their mind goes a million miles an hour because they don't know that it's actually safe to be in their body. So mm -hmm. what can happen with a lot of the techniques and things I do with clients and that I teach is that people actually start to feel more embodied again 
and they actually start to go back into their body and out of their mind. So they're not just th overthinking too much because that's, that's a safety mechanism, but then it gets stuck in a negative loop and you never feel safe in your mind. You only can never feel safe in your body. So that can happen as well. What also can happen is, you know, the body actually starts getting unhealthy and, you know, all sorts of things can happen with the body. It gets in disharmony, creates like, you know, gut health issues, all these other things. And if your body feels like it's dying because it's, it's unhealthy, then your mind's going to start racing because it's like, well, I'm dying here. Do something about it. And we, we misinterpret the signals a lot. So that can happen, but it can go the other way too. If our mind starts racing, our body responds to the thoughts we have as if the things are real. If you're sitting and you're imagining stressful situations, it actually responds as if you're in those stressful situations. So you, we, most of the time, you know, we go on all these like roller coaster rides in our mind that actually our body is feeling like it's actually been through. So that's why a lot of people feel tired at the end of the day, they feel run down it's because they're running all these really traumatic and scary scenarios in their head. And then their body is going through those wars and all those battles but it's not happening in the real world. So like manifestation. Oh, look, I so get it. I used to be a big kind of scary thriller. And now I'm like, why do I want to put my body through all that? Yeah, yeah. It's, watching movies is really, really interesting. Uh, I'm super sensitive to like real scary movies and stuff. And I'm like, oh. but, um, you know, you've got to be aware, especially if you're watching those kind of things at night while you're eating, because you're, when you're eating, your body should be in a relaxed state. But if you're going through this stuff and you're eating, that's why a lot of people develop food allergies because their body's in a stress state and they're eating food and it gets linked up in the nervous system. Oh. And your body's not going to assimilate, break down, and actually use all the nutrients because it's in a fight or flight state. And when you're in that state, your body thinks it's running away from a threat. Digesting food is not a high priority. Survival is. So it's going to sacrifice using the food, breaking it down, and then actually turning it into your body. So this is why a lot of people's bodies break down. It's because their body is never going into that rest, digest state because it's always in a perpetual fight or flight state. And so interesting. Makes so much sense. Wow. Yeah, because I've, I've now really, we just have a very quiet dinner now because I just want it to be very stress-free and enjoy the food, you know. But, um, wow, I love that, that whole connection. Because I know um, ages ago I went to see someone who said that, like even bread, like when you eat bread, it cuts off the ability for the body to know that there's food there and there's, it's almost like you're being starved. And so the brain thinks there's a panic that you've cut off because it numbs the tummy or something. Yeah, I mean, and everything's slightly different for different people. But yeah, if you aren't getting nutrients, like from your food because you're in a fight or flight state, you might be having food in your body, but if your body isn't getting the nutrients, it's going to send that signal to you like do something and then you're going to crave nutrients. And most of the time people go for the quick fix sugars and all that kind of stuff. And they don't actually get that. The body hasn't been fulfilled. So it, you get eat more and more of stuff that isn't actually doing stuff for you. And it starts those negative cycles too. So a lot of people use food, they use alcohol, they use cigarettes, they use all sorts of things to try to meet the body's cravings. But what it's really craving is to go into that relaxed state to then actually use the food it's got and then it'll balance out there and then you won't, you know, feeding it the wrong stuff isn't working. It's like putting the wrong petrol in your car and wondering why the light keeps flashing. It, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. I remember that one. Awesome. And then we talked about, um, you were going to talk about the harnessing the power of the mind to take control of your life. Cool. So once you've actually created this sort of balanced state in your body, you've got a real ability then to create. So, when you're stressed out and, you know, wound down, it's very hard to think outside of what you've already got. Yeah. So your personality reflects your personal reality. So the way you're thinking, the emotions you're feeling, the actions you take, the behaviors you create, creates your personality. And for you to create new, you need to be able to start to stimulate the creative centers and actually start thinking differently, feeling different than doing and then having different things, which then creates a cycle. But if you're in a stress response, when you're stressed, your body wants to do what it's always done because it keeps you safe. So you're not thinking about doing new, you're thinking about, oh, what kept me alive? Even though it wasn't great, it kept me alive, so I'll keep doing that. So what is awesome is once you've built this balance, then you can really start performing, you can start really creating great results because now you can actually start thinking outside of what you've done in the past. So there's lots of really cool things we, we can discover and talk about with this. I'm not sure. How are we doing for time? We've got plenty of time. Uh, we'll probably we'll get another 10, 15. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we'll, we'll save at least five, maybe or so minutes at the end. But what's great is once you start understanding that 
the words you say to yourself actually influence your body. Your body is eavesdropping on every single internal dialogue you have and the things you focus on. Every, every picture you make in your mind as well is actually creating those physical responses. You get really start to understand the way you feed your mind, feed your body, and then your body creates an emotional state, which then, you know, resonates out into the world around you and you start filtering to attract those things to you. So once you get clear on who you want to be, what you need to do and what you want to have in your life. And you start focusing on those with the feelings of gratitude that it's already happened with the emotions of joy and excitement for what you're creating. Those things will start to pull you forward and your body will start to reflect those positive emotional states as well. So this is where you can learn to steer your mind and body together. You can use your emotions. You can use your mind to then ripple out and affect the outside world. So we're going to do a technique later. that's going to create coherence in some of the biological oscillators. So what I was talking about before is like when your mind's out of whack, then your breathing is probably going to go out of whack. Your digestion is going to go out of whack. We're going to do a technique that helps to balance those systems of your body and give you that balanced state. And then we're going to help to stimulate the feeling of gratitude and gratitude is really healing for the body, but also it's the, I've heard it said is the ultimate state of receivership. When you've already, when you feel the feeling of gratitude, you've already received something. So the universe if you feel like you're receiving, the universe is going to give you more receiving. So what is fantastic once you start getting on top of this, be grateful for things that haven't happened in the real world yet. So you be grateful for the new job or be grateful for the relationship, be grateful for the um, new holiday, the house that you want or whatever it is and imagine it as already happening and feel the gratitude. That's going to bring it to you a lot faster. Plus it's going to give you the motivation to do it. So awesome. running off those positive feelings is so much better for your body and you get energized by it versus breaking down oh i love it okay i'm ready <laughs> we'll get into this um anyone that's listening just make sure there's minimum distractions as possible i know that you're probably all in different places what's awesome as well if you want to go inside my voice will still go with you so close your eyes go inside for the moment and just notice how you're feeling just at the moment there might be tensions in your body. There might be all sorts of different feelings. That's okay. Just focus on your breath. So I want you to breathe in through your nose and breathe in as deep as possible. So every breath that you take, I want you to go deeper every time. So your goal is to breathe all the way down into your stomach. And as you blow out, I want you to relax and let go of all the tension in your body. Then every single breath you take, I want you to go deeper with your breath and I want you to see if you can breathe all the way into your feet. And as you blow up, I want you to relax even more because the more you relax, the deeper you go and the deeper you go, the more you can relax. Now, I want you to keep a nice smooth rhythm of your breath. I want you to breathe in for five seconds and nice and deep into your body and then out for five seconds. And once you establish that nice deep breath, I want you to slowly move your focus into your heart, into your heart center. I want you to notice the feeling and maybe the beating of your heart. And as you quiet yourself down, you can begin to feel that beating in your heart. It's been going even before you were born. There's a wisdom in your heart that knows how to balance and center your body. I want you to focus on it and connect to that feeling. Put more energy and focus on your heart. Breathe into your heart. Every breath you take, you can focus even more. And the more you focus, the more you relax. And the more you relax, the more you focus now. In a moment, I want you to think of someone, some place, something in your life that you feel grateful for. It could be something in the past, it could be something in the present, or it could be something in the future. But I want you to start to bring it to your mind now. And I want you to think and feel what you were thinking and feeling when that was present. I want you to make that picture bigger, brighter, and closer. Notice that feeling of gratitude in your body.
Notice what you feel in your body and give that feeling a color. Let it flow from head to toe. Take a deep breath in. And I want you to focus on letting that gratitude spread all the way through your body. Like every time your heart beats, that gratitude flows from your heart through every single blood vessel, through every single part of your body. Breathe deeper and feel that gratitude flow from head to toe. And the more you feel grateful, the more you have in your life to feel grateful for. And I want you to think of more places and more times where you feel grateful. More people. It could be things you've done yourself. I want you to think of them now. Bring that picture to your mind. And notice the more grateful you feel, the more balanced your body feels. And the more balanced your body feels, the more you feel grateful in your life. Now I want you to go out into the future, taking this grateful, gratitude feeling with you. And I want you to see more places and more times where you can feel grateful, more things in your life and more people where you can use and feel this gratitude feeling. And because you feel it, you see it more. Your mind and your body is filtering the world for things that make you feel grateful. Notice all the things in your life that you can appreciate. Because when you appreciate them, you get more of it. It appreciates when you appreciate it. And the more you feel grateful, the more you have to feel grateful for it. In a moment, on a count from one to three, you're going to come back to the room, fully alert, feeling fantastic. But before then, take another deep breath. Focus on that feeling again. Let the color flow from head to toe. Let every single cell of your body bathe in this gratitude. Take another breath. Relax even more. And take a moment to connect to yourself inside and be grateful for letting yourself have this experience. Not just this experience, but the life that you have right now. You've gone through so much. You've been through so much. Be grateful for where you are right now and the opportunities you have right in front of you. One, you can feel yourself take another deep breath in, starting to feel the energy coming back to your body. Two, becoming more alert and refreshed. And three, all the way back to the room, feeling fantastic. Ooh. <laughs> that was wonderful. Oh, I just so went to that place. Beautiful. It's nice, isn't it? And the more you practice these kind of methods, there's lots of different ones. The basic idea comes from heart math. They've studied the heart and how the heart it actually emits the most uh, electromagnetic frequencies out of any of the centers of the body, even the brain. It's got a bigger uh, electromagnetic field. And if you breathe with it, you connect to it and you feel that feeling of gratitude, it actually creates coherence and balances out different centers of your body. And that's fantastic for your health. But in doing that also, um, the way I was kind of running you through it is also starting to spread that feeling into your future and starting to create cool things to look forward to as well. So it starts to help reprogram you to start looking at the world differently. So these are some really cool techniques that don't take very long that you can just practice at home and they'll have ripple effects in your life. I love it. I feel so zen. It's, nice, isn't it? <laughs> and it's funny, my whole body temperature has dropped as well. I yeah. could just feel kind of it's calmed. Amazing. I love it. Oh, so, um, okay. So is there anything else you'd like to talk about or any processes or anything? I mean, we're up for like, time, but I'm happy to go if there's any. Oh, well, um, what, what do you think would like, is there any sort of anything in particular you're thinking would be beneficial, like anything that people really struggle with? Um, let, let me put a question out, guys. Yeah. Anyone like to ask a question or any help would be fantastic. There's well, a little chat. There's out there. If there's something specific yeah, yeah. that you want to know, um, that would be fantastic. Because um, then Paul can address it, which would be great. And because, I mean, I just got so much, through, I mean, it's so hard to kind of put everything you do in half an hour, <laughs> it's just like, but it was fantastic. I feel that there's a, a real um, kind of, there's definitely stuff that I've even taken away myself as well, which is fantastic. Yeah. I know everyone says, I think everyone's very zen. They're all there, but they're all no questions. Everyone seems to have everything covered. Awesome. So tell me what is... Um, how do people find you? Your, your, what's your business? And your... Well, my business is called Evolve Mind and Body Coaching. 
Uh, I'm most active on Facebook. You can either add my business page or add me personally, Paul Lucio. And um, I'm happy to chat with you and let you know more. I'm actually running uh, my practitioner trainings all around Australia. So I've got courses coming up in Adelaide, Perth, Gold Coast. And then I've also got my advanced hypnotherapy training as well, um, which is, uh, I, I believe, the best in the world. And um, yeah, so that's happening as well. I'm going to be running more things online as well. The best thing to kind of do is connect with me. Even if you go to my website, put your details in and then stay connected on my email list and I'll keep you guys informed with what's happening. And obviously I take some one-on-one -on -one clients as well. Uh, and you know, if, if someone needs help, I'm always there willing to help them as well. And it depends on what the person's going through and what they're doing, what we do, but um, have a wide variety of things that we can use to help. Fantastic. Them. Cause just so you know, Paul's just opened up his one-on-ones at the moment for a while. So yeah. if you are interested, is a good time to get in there? I know that there's not for a, a little bit, um, yeah. but I will then upload this tomorrow to my YouTube channel yeah. and I'll put the link as well. And on there so people can revise, cause that's a great process that I want to listen to again. So it's nice. And just, you know, give yourself that time every day you'd be surprised how much just a couple of minutes will add up. You know, what I tell my clients is it's like the steam builds up in the pot. Unless you let the steam out, eventually it's going to explode. So what that does is kind of empties the pot, puts some good stuff in there, and then that goes out instead. So um, definitely give yourself that couple of minutes a day. Gorgeous. Now we've got a question from Matt. Awesome. Uh, hi, Paul. I felt like that last exercise had some hypnosis involved. Yeah. Are there some benefits of this hypnosis on yourself in your own life? And how does it go beyond the generalized view of a method of persuasion? Thanks so much for this chat. Cool. So um, I'm a big believer that hypnosis and meditation are the same thing with a different hat on. Right. Um, so the state of meditation, most meditations is to just steal the mind. Um, we were doing it with the intention to connect the mind and body together and focus on certain, you know, the heart and create the, the feeling of coherence. Um, the way I do a lot of things, I use as many skills as I can and kind of, bring them all together so using the hypno obviously helps to relax the body it helps to direct the mind and hypnosis is more meditation with an intention it's more directing what's happening in that relaxed focused state into doing something so great pick up there that's exactly what we were doing with that technique um i find it's a bit more powerful a little bit quicker than just getting someone to try to relax and fight their thoughts and and all those kind of things i feel like if you get someone focused you get the motion going and they connect to it, it just speeds up the process a lot faster for um, if you do it for yourself, that's fantastic. But for clients, it's fantastic as well. I think it's just through the years of doing things, it's just quicker and a, a lot more effective. But I didn't even know, like I wouldn't have even thought that was hypnosis because you didn't go, but I, I guess that's how it starts. It's just by focus, isn't it? Really where so hypnosis um, went by lots of many names. It was mesmerism. It was all sorts of things. At one point it was called mono ideism to take well, all the things and focus on one thing. So the state of hypnosis is like, there's lots of different things to think about. Basically, I believe that any communication is hypnotic in nature. If I talk about walking down the street with my dog and a red car pulls out in front of me in your mind, at some level, you're creating a picture of that. So yeah. all, all anytime you talk to someone, anytime you're in anyone's, environment you'll be affected by them so um one of the biggest things i teach is how you communicate with yourself because all self-talk is self-hypnosis you're constantly programming yourself all the time so when you understand that and you understand how you talk to other people and what uh what they're doing internally based on what you're saying and what they're doing internally to themselves based on what they're saying it's really really powerful because these are skills that everyone like does anyway but most people don't know that they're not number one really bad hypnotist they hypnotize themselves in bad ways and also that they hypnotize other people in bad ways too you've, mm -hmm. you've all gone out with a friend somewhere and they tell you all the bad stuff that's happened to them and then by the end of it you feel tired because you've basically just gone through their full experience as well so you know parents teachers i use a lot of hypnosis in my teaching because i teach that but also it helps people to learn faster um, and some of the things that you say to people as a kid growing up that becomes their programming and a lot of my programming came from my teachers, my parents, and it's really important to be able to use those things in a way that helps people not shut them down. So it's super powerful. Like I, there's different people that teach hypnosis and a lot of it's really average in Australia, honestly. Um, but I, I believe a lot of the stuff I teach is the best stuff that's out there. So oh, it's amazing. I mean, I've done hypnosis, I've had hypnotherapy a few times and it was amazing because you just, 
you don't even go deeply into it. It's so kind of before you're there, you just, I didn't have time to actually block or self-sabotage, which is what usually happens. It didn't feel forced. It was just very natural and really talking to myself. And I love the idea of it in the sense that it's really about getting informed and being conscious yes. of what's happening in your mind, which yeah. is that whole thing. So gorgeous. I love it. Thank you. This is my pleasure. I've really enjoyed tonight. Yes, well, um, no, thank you. Oh, we've got another question. Cool, so cool. The, the difference between us from that, okay, between a professional hypnosis practitioner and the rest of us who are hypnotizing ourselves into various programs is intention or lack thereof awareness. Yeah, yeah. I would say that most people aren't aware that what they, what they say to themselves, what they're picturing in their mind, what people say to them is unconsciously affecting them. Yeah. Everything you see on TV is unconsciously affecting you. Everything you hear on the radio is affecting you. Every conversation you have with people around you is affecting you. And that's why a lot of people say, like, don't hang around people that are you know, complaining all the time because it, it affects you. And I'm not saying, like, just you know, don't you know, keep people in your life and all that kind of thing, but be aware, number one, how you talk to yourself and what you focus on. Where focus goes, energy flows. Yeah. If you're focusing on all the bad stuff in your life, guess what you get more of? Yeah. yeah. If you're about problems, you get more problems. If you focus on what you're grateful for and what you want in your life, then you get more grateful and you get more of what you want in life. So that's why that technique is one I wanted to share tonight because gratitude literally is the gateway to receiving and, and you know, contributing more on the planet. Because if, you, if there's always things to be grateful for, there's always things to be pissed off about. It's what, what do you focus on? You know, some people, uh, they get $100 and they're so grateful for it. Some people get $100 and go, oh, I wanted $150. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's the same thing. So, Yeah, gorgeous. No, I love it. Thank you. Well, Pam, thank you for everybody listening. And so wonderful to have you on the webinar series. And, um, yeah, we'll put your details out there. And um, I'm sure I'd love to have you on because I really want you to do one on manifestation too. Awesome. That'd be fun. He has an awesome process, which uh, we'll get you back to do, which would be fantastic. Awesome. Thank awesome. you, Paul. And uh, good night to everybody. And uh, next week we'll be with Jean Claire. So tune in next Monday. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, okay. Bye, everyone. Bye.